Hi, I'm Jess, Sharon, Nancy, Desley, Elaine, and we are JHO underscore two. Hi everyone, welcome to today's podcast by JH12 underscore two. I'm your main host, Desley, and here are my co-hosts. Yes. Hello everyone, I am one of the co-hosts, Nancy, and my other co-host. Yes, I'm Elaine. So recently, um, I've been seeing a lot of fast food restaurants um, pop up around. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think of um, these fast food chains? So because there's so many fast food chains around, the competition is really big for yes. emerging new fast food chains and also the old ones. So what do you think about how these companies should go about, you know, fighting this competition? Yeah, I think they really need to focus on the hospitality part of you know giving that service to mm. new customers yeah that's true because yeah. like you know the food is like basically the same yeah. yeah but what really differentiates a business is their customer service so speaking of that do you guys like kfc or tfc mm. oh that's a hard one yeah mm. i think i've got to say tfc tfc yeah. well that really brings good. us to today's highlight we're going to be focusing on tfc's strategy to increase their sales and to achieve higher revenue targets so speaking of this strategy what are they thinking of doing so you know consumer psychology is so important to an effective marketing strategy isn't it yeah i completely agree but what exactly are they going to do to implement this strategy well, these guys, they're doing something very interesting. Um, they have mapped out three scenarios featuring different customer interactions oh. to test which scenario would better compel consumers to purchase a drink with their order, which means for um, higher sales. Um, and um, the three scenarios are as follows. So the first one, they would end up with just a thank you. Welcome to TFC, I'm Sanjay. How may I serve you today? Hi Sandu, I would like to grab a quarter fried chicken with small chips. Sure, just confirming your order is a quarter fried chicken with small chips? Yep, that's right. Okay, thank you. Second one, they'd say, thank you, would you like a drink with that? Right. Welcome to TFC, I'm Sanjay. How may I serve you today? Hi Sanjay, I would like to grab a quarter fried chicken with small chips. Sure, just confirming, your order is a quarter fried chicken with small chips? Yep, that's right. Okay, thank you. Would you like to have a drink with the meal? Final scenario is, thank you. What drink would you like with that? Welcome to TFC, I'm Sanjay. How may I serve you today? Hi Sanjay, I would like to grab a quarter fried chicken with small chips. Sure, just confirming your order is a quarter fried chicken with small chips? Yep, yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you. What drink do you want to go with the meal? Wow, so all three conditions are really different, aren't they? Yeah, yes. That's very interesting. That really plays with consumer psychology. I'm really interested to see what comes of this research. Should we continue? Yes, we definitely should. So TFC's got all this survey data. How are they going to make any sense of it? So of course, going into this, TFC has a main aim, which pretty much is they want to understand the 18 to 24 year olds motivations towards purchases at checkout points. Oh, right. Yeah, it's really interesting that you talked about 18 to 24. I feel like that's really the main demographic for fast food chains. Yeah, I really think that's what TFC is going for. They really want to narrow it down to their main demographic. So in order to really understand all the statistics that TFC has, they've actually broken down their statistical aims into several smaller ones. And we're going to be breaking that down for you guys as well today. All right, let's jump straight in. Yep. So what is A1, Ellen? So TFC really wants to find if there is a relationship between the three conditions and the likelihood of purchasing a drink for customers who are under 25 years old. So Desley, how are we going to achieve this? Well, as with um, any statistical tests, there's always going to be a null and an alternate hypothesis. For this one, um, the null hypothesis is that there is no association between the likelihood of purchasing a drink and each of the conditions for the respondents who are under 25 years old. The alternate is that there is an association between the likelihood of purchasing a drink and each of the conditions for respondents who are under 25 years old. All right, so what strategy and what test did they actually run to achieve this aim? Well, um, so the methods um, that they conducted were as follows. Firstly, they used select cases to uh, filter out the um, 
people who are over 24 years old. That's yes. right. Right, and then we can really get that 18 to 24 age group range. So what do you do after you select cases? So after you select cases, um, you conduct an ANOVA test. Wait, wait, hold on. Why do you use ANOVA? What is an ANOVA? Well, um, the reason why we use the ANOVA test is to compare the means between each of the um, conditions and then test to see if there is an association between um, any of them and um, the likelihood of purchasing a drink for um, the customers. So if the results come out as significant, what does that mean? So if the results are significant, we actually reject the null hypothesis that we mentioned, meaning that there will be a significant difference between the likelihood of purchasing a drink and each of the conditions for respondents who are under 25 years old. Moving on to the next statistical aim, TFC wants to see if whether the perceived pressure to purchase a drink has an effect on the likelihood of purchasing a drink. Ah, oh, I see. So does that mean if they um, employed more pressure with their customers, yep. uh, would they increase their sales? Yes, that is what TFC is trying to find out here. Alright, so for this aim too, will we be using the ANOVA test again? No, in fact we'll be using correlation because since ANOVA is actually comparing means, correlation actually shows whether and how strongly pairs of variables are related because we have two variables here. Alright, so Ms. Lee, what do you think the hypothesis are? Well, um, the null hypothesis is that there is no correlation between pressure and the likelihood of purchasing a drink for customers under 25 years old. The alternate, on the other hand, is that there is a correlation between pressure and the likelihood of purchasing a drink for customers under 25 years old. So if there's a weak correlation, what does that actually mean for this aim? So for this aim, a weak correlation simply just means there is little to no relationship between the pressure and the likelihood of purchasing a drink. Oh, so those are the two continuous variables, right? Yeah, and by running the Pearson correlation test, we can really see if there is correlation or not. Mm. Alright, so what does TFC have for aim 3? So for aim 3, TFC wants to see if there is a relationship existing between the conditions and the perceived pressure to purchase a drink for customers under 25 years old. Alright, so they're seeing that if you add sentences to the end in the different conditions, will that increase pressure or not for these customers? Yes, exactly. They really want to find that out in this aim. And you take it away with the hypothesis. Of course, this Lee. So basically for the null hypothesis, that would be there is no relationship existing between the conditions and the perceived pressure to purchase a drink for customers. Mm. While the alternate... Uh, would that be that there is a relationship? Correct. The alternate would be that there is a relationship between the conditions and the perceived pressure to purchase a drink for customers. So what test are we using here, does the... Um, well, we'll be using the ANOVA test, um, given the situation that we have three conditions and one group and one continuous variable. Alright, so for the next aim, we have two continuous variables again. So what are they, Nancy? So, TFC basically wants to see whether the perceived pressure to purchase a drink has any effect on customer satisfaction and the overall experience at TFC. Alright, oh, yeah, because when customers feel pressured, um, they might develop a negative perception of the brand. Right! <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, and that's not, not what TFC wants. wants. Yeah, right, so does Lee take it away with the hypothesis? Yep, so the null hypothesis is that there's no correlation between pressure and customer satisfaction. Can you guys guess what the alternate hypothesis is? Is it that there is a correlation between pressure and customer satisfaction? So similar to aim 2, we're using the Pearson correlation test again for this one? Yep. Mm, yes, that's right. So um, that means um, if there's a weak correlation, it means that there's little to no relationship between the two variables. All right, simple enough to understand. Mm. So speaking about pressure, this seems like a pretty important variable in influencing consumer purchasing processes, doesn't it? Yeah, indeed. I think that's probably what TFC was thinking of when they made their fifth aim, which is where they tested the relationships between six various variables and pressure. Mm, yeah, so... Yeah, so 
Here we go. Take it away with your hypothesis. So the hypothesis that TFC um, came up with, the null hypothesis, is that there is no relationship between pressure and the selected factors. And the alternate hypothesis, as you guessed it, there there is is a relationship between pressure and the other factors. That's right, everyone. So, um... Let's run through the factors that um, we've selected to look at. All right. So by the looks of it, they have decided to choose whether or not their respondents were in a relationship, what gender they are, whether they're in uni or high school, their highest education, their ethnicity, and their income level. Mm. So there's so many factors involved. What tests are they going to be using? Well, for the first three that we mentioned, relationship, gender, and whether the respondents were in uni or high school, they only have two options. So we're going to use an independent sample t-test. So for the other three, what tests are we going to use? Well, because the first three only had two options, the last three had... Oh, wait, let me guess. ANOVA? That's yes! Yes! have more than two options for highest education, ethnicity and income level, we will be using the ANOVA! Yes. That brings us to the question once again, what does it mean exactly if we have significance in any of these tests conducted? So if um, there is a significance found, um, it means that there's some relationship between um, the factor and pressure. Alright, I see. That's pretty easy to understand. Mm -hmm. So, Desley, what does this mean for the hypothesis? So, if there is um, a significant value, we can reject the null hypothesis, meaning that uh, there is a relationship between any of the factors and pressure. So finally, we are up to the last aim and because the nature of this aim may be a little difficult for users and listeners to understand, we want to pass this on to our special guests for today's podcast, which is um, our special experts from the marketing team representing TFC. Please welcome them. Welcome, welcome. welcome. So here our researchers are, Xiao and Eska. Yep. Hi, everyone. For AIM6, we have decided to do to what extent do the two variables, likelihood of purchasing a drink and pressure, predict customer satisfaction for respondents under 25 years old under each condition. So what does this all mean, Neska? We have conducted three constrained multivariate regression tests under those three conditions. We have two independent variables which are predictors of the dependent. The two independent variables are pressure and the likelihood of purchasing a drink and the dependent variable is customer satisfaction. So, why are we running this regression test? Well, as you see, the two independent variables, pressure and likelihood of purchase. So, while pressure might increase likelihood of purchase for consumers and thus increase instantaneous sales, it might also decrease customer satisfaction in the long term and that is not what TFC wants. Indeed. Yes. Because customer satisfaction determines long-term sales, it's very important to predict this through regression. Thank you everyone, this has been JH12 underscore 2. Um, I hope you've had a great time listening to us. Thank you for tuning in with us and next week we'll be discussing the actual results in detail of TFC's research. Thank you very much. Yes, um, and uh, signing off, your main MC... This moon. Yes, and co host Elaine. <laughs> no, our last co host, Nussi. Thank you very much. Have Thank a good you. night. See you next week. <laughs>